Now let us uh, move forward. We are pleased to be joined today uh, by a very um, rich host of partners. Um, and first, uh, let me mention that uh, the Secretary General of the Inter-Parliamentary Union, Mr. Martin Chumrol, I think parliamentarians are very familiar with him. He's a familiar face. Um, and I've also had the pleasure and privilege of working with him in the IPU. Uh, Martin, we hope uh, this first event is the start of a longer term relationship uh, between the Global Organization of National Parliaments and the Climate Threatened Nations uh, cooperating under the CBF banner. We will also be welcoming um, a keynote uh, speech from His Excellency Mr. Ban Ki-moon, who, as you all know, uh, was the eighth Secretary General of the United Nations, a very successful Secretary General, if I may say. And it is during his tenure uh, that uh, the Paris Agreement was signed. Uh, 2015, as you know, is the 2030 Agenda starting off point, and he was an important architect in that process. And currently he's serving as the chair of the board of the Global Center on Adaptation. For those of you who are not familiar, the Global Center is a relatively young organization entirely, entirely dedicated to the challenge of adapting to climate change. Uh, the GCA is also hosting the CBF Secretariat. We are also likewise uh, very honored and privileged to be joined by two outstanding parliamentarians, uh, each with a very strong record of engagement and commitment in, climbing fight, uh, in fighting climate change and tackling environmental issues with laws and parliamentary engagement in a broad uh, spectrum of areas. Uh, former President Nasheed of the Maldives, who is currently Speaker of the People's Majlish, that is the Parliament of the Maldives. And we also have the Speaker of the Philippines, uh, Lauren Lagarda, a longtime friend. And of course, you are also both investors of the CVF for ambition and parliaments respectively. We are also very pleased to be joined by Mami Mizutori, who is the special representative of the United Nations Secretary General for Disaster Risk Reduction. And as we all know, the two issues, climate change adaptation and DRR are extremely closely linked. Um, so I thank uh, you, um, all of the panelists for, for joining us today. Um, let us uh, move on. So. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, moderator, but you need to put your audio onto the English channel and mute original so that the interpreters can follow. And uh, everybody who's following English, if they can move to the English channel and mute original audio in order to continue to hear the moderator. Okay, am I, am I being heard properly now? Can you hear me now? Hello? Mar uh, Matthew, can you hear me? Yes, that works now. Um, so I don't know how much you were able to pick up, but uh, I, I think I'll move on. There was the house speak, uh, keeping. Did everyone pick that up and the introduction to the, to the panelists? Yes, everybody would have heard it. It's just that the interpretation can't function unless you're in the English okay. channel. Yeah. So please so, just proceed. Okay, so this brings us to the uh, focus of our session today. And uh, if I may briefly summarize, we have a threefold program for this webinar. First, we would like to explore what action parliament, parliaments and parliamentarians can take to support renewed climate ambition, uh, commitments of national governments during the remainder of the year. Um, there are things we can do at home and we can also reach out to partners in parliaments across the world. Um, a year ago in Bangladesh, our national parliament declared a planetary emergency on account of the existential threat uh, that we face today and the closing window of opportunity to keep impacts at a manageable level. Uh, critical to this is not surpassing 1.5 degrees Celsius of warming. Uh, though we now know global emissions need to be cut by 7% each year um, this decade, if we are to keep within that very aspirational target of 1.5 degrees Celsius within reach. That is why the CVF has launched the midnight survival deadline for the climate to call on all countries to meet their Paris Agreement commitments this year to say what more they will do, what more they will do, because that is absolutely critical. Where we are today is simply not good enough. So raising the ambition is critical. 
um, and what they are going to do additionally to tackle climate crisis. In Bangladesh, we are aiming to pass another motion in the parliament that will one, lend support to the national government to submit an enhanced updated NDC before midnight of 31st December this year. Uh, number two, we call on the parliaments of other nations to take similar actions and to ensure parliaments are not made the excuse for missing a critical once in a five year deadline under the Paris Agreement. So the five year deadline is 31st December uh, 2020. And number three, to support the development of a national plan to achieve planetary prosperity through national development that is consistent with becoming climate resilient. I will share both our resolutions with the uh, meeting outcome of today and would strongly, strongly encourage those parliaments present to consider similar actions. Secondly, with the advent of Deputy Speaker Lagarde's appointment as CBF ambassador for parliaments, we are exploring the possibility of launching a dedicated program. It can be a union or a league of parliaments of climate threatened nations and the work we could do together to better tackle climate issues. As many of us are well aware, parliaments have an extremely important role to play in fighting climate change. I think some of you may already have reviewed the concept note on what a CVF parliament can do in the meeting documents that we have already circulated. We have outlined three areas of work together. The first is we can share share valuable experiences and good practices on legislative measures in support of ambitious and urgent climate action to safeguard communities and progress towards the CVF's goals. Number two, we can work collectively to secure greater commitments and to overcome barriers to climate action from political parties, both within CVF member states and through international outreach. Number three, we can work for a financing and regulatory environment to deliver the planetary prosperity agenda of the CVF. Uh, we can promote action through policy making measures, such as by creating more efficient permit and approval processes, updating building codes, enabling financing agreements, and promoting expertise, skills, and awareness. So there is really a lot that, can, that we can do, and there is a huge potential in the engagement of parliaments in this very important agenda. Thirdly, we would like to discuss the linkages between this climate agenda and the work that we do as parliamentarians to build back and forward better. This is particularly relevant to the different public stimulus and response and recovery packages being dealt with by our parliaments in these days of COVID-19. In touching on this topic, we need to express our heartfelt concern to member countries in Central America who have been devastated by hurricanes Anta and Iota, to the Philippines who is recovering from multiple storms, including super typhoon Goni, the Pacific who was hit earlier in the year by Cyclone Herald, and also in my own country of Bangladesh, which was struck by super cyclone Ampam just as the COVID pandemic was worsening. These types of concurrent climate fuel crisis are a serious complication to efforts to deal with a public health crisis like today's pandemic. These important topics are going to be covered. So to start us off, we are going to show a short video from the CVF Secretariat to introduce the CVF's midnight survival deadline for the climate. Can we have the video, please? 